Welcome. In a ninth grade, tenth grade geometry class, we often give kids formulas and just tell them, here it is, believe it, we can't prove it, requires calculus to prove it, but let's just play with it nonetheless and just shove in numbers and all the rest. I don't find that very satisfying. I'd like to give students the opportunity to understand where formulas come from. And one of them is the form of the volume of a sphere. So we often tell them that the volume of a sphere of radius r, so here's a sphere, radius r, volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And this just comes out cold and not very exciting. What I'd like to do here is take all the hard work we've done of a previous video on working out the volume of a cone and use it to show how Archimedes derived this formula 4 thirds pi r cubed before the invention of calculus. Obviously he was using the ideas of calculus uh, without directly mentioning it back then. So here we are. Here we go. What Archimedes did, after I'm sure much, much thought and, and uh, heartache and struggle, he said, let's just enclose the top half of the sphere in a cone, in a, sorry, in a cylinder, what am I saying? So we'll just focus on the top half. So there it is, there's a cylinder of radius r again, and obviously the height of the cylinder is going all the way up another raised the sphere, so its height is r. And he noticed something remarkable about the space outside the top half of the sphere inside that cylinder. What he did, he said, okay, just like Cavalieri's principle in the previous video, let's look, imagine this is like stacks of paper, but he's, remember he's looking at the outside part, which is very confusing, so it'd be hard for me to draw, but I'm going to attempt to do it. For the, at a particular height x, the uh, slice at height x of the, cone, of the cylinder is a circle of radius r, whereas the slice of the sphere at that height would be a circle of smaller radius. So that means the space outside, the one I'm interested in, would be a little ring between these two circles. So you know something about the area of that ring, you can actually calculate it. That is, he said, if we went up x inches, we could work out the area of that green ring. He knows there was this radius all the way out to here for the inner circle, still radius r, still part of the sphere, which means he could work out a form for the radius of that smaller circle. By Pythagoras, it must be the square root of r squared minus x squared. And the outer ring is still a circle of radius r. That's all the way out to r. So that means the area of this green ring it would be the big circle, area of the big circle, minus the area of the small circle, pi its radius squared. Well, here goes. Squaring a square root gets me back to just r squared minus x squared, and then some algebra of the pi r squareds cancel on given pi x squared. And he thought, that is actually fabulous. Because he had an epiphany that if he drew the same cylinder, I'll draw it over here, same radius r, same height r, and in it drew the line, the diagonal line y equals x, so it's perfectly diagonal. And in fact, did it on both sides to make a cone. He noticed if he went up x inches for this cone, well, since it's a perfect diagonal line, it's also x inches out. That means this slice at height x is also a circle of radius x, and so also has area pi x squared. Now, from the previous video on cones, we did look at Cavalieri's principle, and we said that we had stacks of paper such that each height, each, stack, each piece of paper had the same area, then the volumes of the two read cones must be the same. We've got that going on here. We've got the space stack, this green rim is actually the same area as this cone. So if I stacked up all the space pieces like this, we get basically just proved that the area, the volume of the space on the left picture must equal the volume of the cone on this picture. But I know the volume of this cone. From the previous video, we know it's one third the area of its base, pi r squared, still radius r, times its height, which is r. So it's one third pi r cubed. So we have now deduced that the volume of the space outside, this, at least the top half of the sphere, is one-third pi r cubed. Well, we're all set now. Things have fallen into place. What I'd like now is the volume of the actual sphere. Well, so far we've focused on the top half of the sphere, so right now we can say, at the very least, the volume of at least the top half of the sphere, so the volume of half a sphere, would be the volume of the whole cylinder uh, minus the volume of the space. What's the volume of the whole cylinder? Well, it's pi r squared times r, area of space times height, minus the volume of the space, which we just calculated as one third pi r cubed. Well, pi r cubed minus a third of pi r cubed is two thirds pi r cubed. 
So the volume of the cylinder, take away the volume of the space, leaves me the volume of the top half of the sphere. Great, but I want the volume of the whole sphere. So the volume of the whole sphere must be double that, 4 thirds pi r cubed. Whew. There it is. There is the formula for the volume of a sphere of radius r. Thanks.